Hello Chiefs and welcome back to the Blueprint YouTube channel. Today I have the highlights from the qualifiers that happened this past weekend. We actually saw JX Tiger actually get the golden ticket which is kind of a surprise because they're still pretty, I wouldn't say unknown but not, people wouldn't consider them like a top 6 clan so it's pretty cool to see them make it because they had some really cool attacks. So here we have attack by Joni and he's coming in with what looks like a blizzard then dragon riders so the blizzard meta has changed a lot since when blizzard first came out because before you'd blizzard for the town hall and then you still eat the rest of the base but now you blizzard more for like value pathing and most of the times a hero this is because one the town hall is very trapped now so it's very hard to blizzard and if you do land it, you won't really get much value. And two, you can still set up a pretty big Sui. Because the rest of the base is pretty compact. Because look how much that Blizzard got. And that's just from one compartment. So you can still get really good value from Blizzard. And it still sets up great pathing for the rest of your hit. You just got to find the correct place to put the Blizzard. As Joni did. Unfortunately he didn't get that core multi, so let's see how he handles that, because that is in an awkward position, especially with that sweeper there protecting it. So the heroes do manage to get the town hall, he still has the RC to deploy. So yep, he deploys the RC with the dragon riders. This is to help with the heroes a bit, and the RC is just, she complements the dragon riders pretty well. He doesn't have to put the pop the warden ability, because he had the RC there as well with the headhunters which means the headhunters already have a tank and it just looks like he spammed the dragon riders in he did kill one and as you can see he deployed that now and it goes straight into the sam so it didn't really probably get the value he expected it to get but now it's all starting to look a bit bad everything split off and I think that split actually worked out well for him because he got two, three going to the top multi and then the RC and one going to the single which actually works out pretty well when Dragon Riders are clumped together you can end up missing defenses and that can come back to bite you as it ruins your pathing you don't really need much pathing for Dragon Riders but you definitely don't want to leave defenses behind because it can make it hard for cleanup in the end when you have to go all the way back for it now we have Queen Ring coming in and he's coming in with what looks like a zap blala. I didn't see exactly where he's at, but it looks like he's at either a inferno tower scattering. I think it's an inferno tower. And now he's coming in with the Sui for the town hall and his multi. I would say he gets a bit lucky there that the CC went to the king and not the queen, because if it went to the queen, that queen was definitely not getting that town hall. He actually sends the RC behind the king straight into the CC, which I have been seeing a lot. I guess is one to handle the CC and two just to get the extra value behind the king because the king, a max king and max yak, they tank forever pretty much. So the RC is still going strong, still has her ability and she'll be able to pop it now. And she's actually going to join up with the Lila, which works out pretty well. She's going to run straight into the king though but she still got really good value for where she was placed and now he's coming in with the Lalo he's actually got the stone slammer because he zapped and then he sued the town hall which is uh, really strong for a Lalo especially in this meta and it looks like he has headhunters coming in for the queen it's only this scatter on the back end he has to worry about and he has a freeze for it so this should be fine does have the air defense shooting as well but when you've got a slammer going into the back end of the base is more than likely you're gonna triple especially if you got more loons and then either dragon or dragon rider come out they're very strong to clean up the rest of the base so that was a really clean zap lala hit by Queen Ren. so as we've seen we've already seen two different strategies by JX Tiger and they were both performed very well both were suis so that just shows how powerful heroes still are and you should definitely abuse how powerful heroes are 
for either suies or for spam attacks or even as we see here we have a queen charge by NY Shui and it looks like he's gonna charge into the eagle this is a very weird compartment and honestly it looks like very hard to predict where the queen is gonna path once she steps into the compartment so it would be cool to see how he handles and forces the queen where he wants her to go and then there's a troll tether we actually saw quite a few troll trezzlers at the qualifiers this weekend this is like a, a very old strategy to use to troll teslas because it can cause time falls and such but i guess people have adapted more and he's actually switched a log launch and coming in with that so that is very interesting to see i wonder if he'll have something out of this log launcher to come and kill that multi otherwise there would be i wouldn't say i would say there would be no use to that log launcher so he has the king and the RC and the ground warden coming in to clear the other scatter. So he's pretty much dissecting this compartment. Yes, he has the A's come out and they should be able to get that multi. And then the, he has the other heroes getting that scatter. So he's dissected that compartment with three different um, components. And he's taken it out well. And now he's pretty much funneled his queen so that the log launch opened the wall so that the queen could carry on and get the town hall. He still has a Lalo. Unfortunately, he doesn't have the Warden with the Lalo, but look at what's left. He doesn't really need the Warden. The RC is still going and she has the Warden aura to help her. And she can probably take out this multi if she paths her, but I don't think it matters at this point because the King is still going. And there's just nothing left of the base. Once again, it just shows how powerful the heroes are. That they can get that much value that you can do the Lalo without a Warden ability. And look how many spells he has left. He has two freezes, Invisi, no, he has three freezes, a Rage and a Skelly. And what, he doesn't need any of them apart from a freeze, maybe, that's it. Obviously, you shouldn't swag, because time can be a key deciding factor in matches. But at this point, the match was already over, so he thought he would swag. And to swag that much is very impressive. So, GG's to Shui. And now we have Mok coming in, and it looks like he's coming in with a Queen Charge Dragon Rider as well. He's actually got a Warwicker selected, and not a Log Launcher, which we're used to seeing with charges now. So I wonder if he used a Warwicker with his charge, or if he has another use for it. So it looks like he's going to be charging this compartment, and then possibly going into that Scatter compartment. From that Scatter compartment, you can get the RC as well, clear the CC. I'm not too sure where you go after that because it's very hard to wall break the queen so that is why maybe you'd see the log launch coming but obviously he has a worker. He wall broke that compartment which is very smart. This is so he could wall break this scatter compartment otherwise the wall breaker wouldn't have gone there so that is something you guys should think about when doing like second or third layer wall breaks is if there's any junctions nearby you should break that compartment open first so you can make sure that your wall break goes to the right way and as you saw he used loons to funnel and that is a very cheap way to funnel he's actually coming in with the war wrecker for i guess for the town hall there's no dps on it apart from this wizard tower but it does have to get through quite a bit before it can get there so let's see if the war wrecker can make it it's a very interesting choice normally you see either a blimp or maybe even slammer so to use a war wrecker is interesting I don't think that Warwick is actually going to make it because the Queen had to pop ability. And now the ground expo is on the Warhacker. And if he has sneaky gobs in this, they're going to go to a gold storage, which <laughs> he actually rages the sneaky gobs. So I guess that's an adjustment by him. And then makes him invisible. I think he. Did he miss the invisi? It was hard to tell. But he did manage to get the town hall. Obviously, you want to ensure you get the town hall. Just because two stars are very important, but also because the town hall beams do a lot of damage he might still be able to triple even after all that pretty much swagging a rage to make sure he gets a town hall so only this arch tower up at the 12 o'clock section which worries me because he might not have anything to take it down and he's a bit low on time but there's nothing else left of the base so he should be able to clean up so that's one very cool way of adjusting I've never seen someone rage a sneaky gob cc because that is essentially what we call the safe cc 
And as you can, this he still has a yak alive, and that's from the king. And he used the king at like the start of the uh, start of the hit to get the eagle. And somehow the yak survived all the way to the end. But this is getting very close this time. He's only got three seconds. It looks like it's going to be a time fail. Wow, that's unfortunate. But to just save that hit in the first place, that is amazing to see. So yeah, GG's to JX Tiger, and they join a very elite lineup of clans. So we still got two more qualifiers. Hopefully, we can see two more amazing qualifiers and two more amazing teams join. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.